Okay. All right, everyone should see filing procedures. Is that what you see? Yes, sir. All right. Brother Diamante, you got a lot of background noise. You can mess yourself out. All right, so when you get into commerce, and we don't recommend getting into commerce until after you've done your nationality, there's been a many of misteachings going around amongst the Moors because everyone is trying to figure out the best way in order to, to provide a remedy. However, the best remedy is to declare your nationality first. Your nationality is the order of the day. So once you declare your nationality, you have made a distinction between the fictitious straw man, artificial entity, artificial person, dummy, and now you have come back into knowledge of self under your indigenous appellation which would be your president, the CEO of the name in all caps, the straw man, the dummy, artificial person, which is the debtor, which is the corporation, the slave, the subject. All right. The master is the indigenous appellation name. The reason why, because the master is not trapped in the matrix. It is the Neo of the Matrix movie, i.e. life. Mr. Anderson is the name in all caps, the straw man, the dummy, or the official person, not the natural person, which is the indigenous appellation, the secure creditor, or the assigner. So what you want to master is the difference between a grantor and the grantee. Most people who have started out in this so-called Moorish movement or listening to sovereign citizens, which can't be sovereign on our land, Albion's that is, they are titled sovereigns. And if that is the case to be sovereign, they must go back to their lands, which they historically connect to. So that would be England, Ireland, Germany, Austria, Romania, Russia, Italy, France, Portugal, Spain, etc., etc. That is where they could be sovereign at, title sovereign, but they can't be sovereign in our country, on our land. They themselves say they were pilgrims or invaders, settlers, meaning that they came from another country and not from here. And everyone wish that Christopher Columbus or Cristobal Colon, since they claim he discovered America, everyone who was here prior to him would have been the indigenous people of the Americas, meaning all the hundreds 
of tribes that was here that was of dark complexion, melanated, copper colored skin tone. So in order to send your documents off to Janet Yellen, who is the Secretary of Treasury, you must have your UCC-1 financial statement, which is allowed now within all 50 states. You must have your power of attorney. You must have your commercial security agreement, your actual and constructive notice your whole homeless indemnity clause or agreement, your non-negotiable security agreement, which now we also have your types and items of property or property listing is also referred to as your collateral listing, your affidavit of service, your active state after it is apostilled by the Secretary of State. So you would do the apostille first, and then the active state. Also, you will want to have your birth certificate authenticated at the state level as well as at the federal level. You want to have an executor, an executress letter. What that does is put you back in control of your estate. your notice and demand. All right, your charge back, bill of exchange, your fiduciary appointment agreement or IRS form 56, your IRS form 1040V, your IRS form 1040, in R, non-residential, your birth certificate accepted for value, front and back at a 45 degree angle in blue ink, your W-8-B-E-N or W-8, your birth certificate bond, your cover letter, your affidavit of notary presentment, the birth certificate, or BC bonds, or securities. When sending duplicates or copies to anyone other than to the U.S. Treasury or IRS, they may be stamped and marked copy. Sending duplicates may be considered counterfeit, counterfeiting securities, so don't do it. You're going to order a actual birth certificate from the Secretary of State, your Secretary of State of the state in which that you domicile in, or the Secretary of State in which that you once domiciled in, that you was conceived in. So if you now live in like me, I'm in North Carolina, I would order one, a new birth certificate long form from New York because I was conceived in this, the so-called state of New York or the New York State, in particular, New York City. Manhattan, Harlem, Washington Heights, Columbia Hospital. At least that's what I was taken to. So, you need optional form 90, optional form 91, and also I will add a civil bond certificate.
File the following documents at every address on list by certified mail with return receipt requested. Now, we don't do certified mail return receipt requested unless you're sending it off to a copy off to uh, what we refer to as um, the Federal Reserve, which is located in San Juan, Puerto Rico. You will want to have what is a registered mail tag first, registered mail red tab, which you can get, of course, both of these from the post office. Now, the thing is, is that a registered mail tab is going to be put on your vanilla envelope as I showed before. And that becomes your UCC trust account number, what is known as your money count, money account, trust account. Okay. Now, what you want is an example how to do this 1040V. This is an example. Of course, it's 2007, but the example is still clear. The 240V is a payment voucher. This is why you do one. Because you're stating that you'll put in $100 trillion into the Treasury, being that it's paper for paper, House Joint Resolution 192. So as you see here, your Social Security number, the dollar amount you leave blank, no need to put it there. You will have that amount listed on your negotiable charge back, negotiable bill of exchange, your private bond set off, as well as also on your civil bond, as well as also on your UCC1 financing statement and the collateral listing. So you can leave the dollar amount blank. The name, all caps, name and initial, all cap. Last name, the address, all caps, city, state, zip code, all caps. Okay. This is the voucher in which that you put in for your straw man. All right, this is what you do for your straw man, your birth name, your government name, your slave name, your name in all caps, whatever term it was that you want to utilize or that you call it. But the name in all caps will be there. So this is the example of how to fill out a 440V or a voucher to the Department of the Treasury, IRS, as a payment voucher. Okay. This is how you prepare the payment. All right. Now, let's look at land patterns. This is this is an excerpt according to Act 21 of 1837. And this is from Michigan. But you need to check your territory because we used to have property in Michigan. 
in Detroit. So you will want to check your area. But this is what it says, 565.301, land patterns, recordings. So where you will go at in order to find this information, you go to the general statutes, the general statutes of the state, the state general statutes. This is where you will go. Land patterns, recordings, existing records, validation, use as evidence, section one. It shall be the duty of the register of deeds in the several counties of this state to receive for record and record and record all patterns of lands for the United States or this state or any copy thereof duly certified by the Commission of the United States General Land Office or by the Secretary of State of this state or other officers having the legal custody of the records of such patterns in the same manner and with like effects as by existing law he is required to receive and record these and conveyances and it shall be the duty of the Secretary of State of this state to record all patterns of lands issued by this state in suitable record and the existing record of patents in the office of the Secretary of State of this state, in all copies of the records of the patents heretofore made and certified to be by the Secretary of State of this state and recorded by the register of deeds of any country of this state and hereby declared legal records and shall have the same effect or same force and effect as if recorded after the passage of this act and shall certify copies of the record of patents heretofore recorded in the office of said Secretary of State and the record of such certified copies may be read in evidence in all courts of this state with the same force and effect as the original patents. <clears throat> so this is why we told you before, you got to get the original pattern, which is located at the Bureau of Land Management for the property or land in which that you or your family once, required, um, once acquired. Once that is done, then you can take that information or that particular number on the original deed and draw up your own register of deeds as an heir to that property. Okay. Any questions on anything I've gone over so far? Brother, 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 I mean, this, this is real bad connection, brother Diamante. Uh, I, I, can, I can barely hear you. All right. They need to meet so, you with his phone. He got a lot of noise in the background. No, it's no better. All right, so steps to secure a land pattern. We present the following in the hope that you will educate yourself in the truth and prepare yourself to stand as electors, as our forefathers and the founding fathers of this nation did with the land, liberty, and rights intact. Through there are many, though there are many purveyors of information about land patterns up the internet, most of these purveyors mix facts with fiction regarding the use of the same implying nefarious purposes 
for the use of land patterns. The simple fact remains through it all. The land pattern is the title to the land, respectively, given that in the terms of said founding fathers as an elector is by definition a landowner. This article is about team land, land patterns, sandwich service, which service we provide for the sole purpose of discovering who the electors are so we can help the people restore our original jurisdiction government back into their vacant seat to save the nation. So what is the vacant seat? The vacant seat is, as it stated, the estate. The estate. So you have to come back into your state and we told you that the way to do that is by doing a letter of executor or executrice, also referred to as the executor or executrice letter. All right, so the land pattern is the title to the land. That's what it is, is the title to the land. All right, and initially to the property accumulate to the land. By definition, a land pattern is the only form of proof or absolute title of the land in the United States of America, not the United States. The United States just won't warrant warranty deeds, quiet claim deeds, or quick claim deeds, all right? A patent is the highest evidence of title and is conclusive as against the government and all claiming under junior titles or patents. U.S. versus Stone. The patent grant of land is a public land standing on the uh, statute books of the state and as and is noticed to every subsequent purchaser under any conflicting sale made afterwards. So that means if you can prove that you are a true heir and anyone else who have even purchased land, put a home on it, or etc., all that is yours. And if they want to proceed to stay, and if you allow them to, they will have to pay you lot rent and fees for usage of the land and having the home or house built on that land, which is your land. Okay. So, Congress has the sole power to declare the dignity and effect of titles emanating from the United States, and the whole um, legislation of the federal government in reference to the public lands declares the patents the superior and its conclusive evidence of legal title. Langdon versus Sherwood. Land patterns are granted to the name party and to their heirs and assigns forever. Did I say forever? Yes, forever. So this is why you can go get the land pattern from the Bureau of Land Management so that you can stake your claim. <laughs> Therefore, the secured ownership of land you must have a proper claim of title. All right? That secures your land ownership to a properly assigned underlying land pattern. Or you could lose what you thought was your land in a land contest. The following steps are the steps we follow to secure documents to accomplish this. We use our copyright forms, which 
we cannot publish here because there are so many unscrupulous and or ignorant people that will use these forms incorrectly and thus possibly jeopardize the process. Therefore, our forms are only available from the team law directly. The following step or steps we will use to perfect our title to land. First, as a landowner, you must have evidence of our right to the land. That is to say, a warranty deed, a well-supported court claim deed, a legally and lawfully documented assignment, inheritance, etc. In any land right battle, the complete chain of title is necessary to a sound win. So for our own records, we always secure the entire chain of documents from the patent, the title itself, to the present, such as the chain of title perfects the title. Though the only way you can be sure your own land is to have a complete chain of title in your own records. If you are sending documents to the team um, law, to use team law's land patent sandwich service documentation, we do not need the complete chain of title, abstract, etc. We only need to see the land patent and certify proof of the most recent deeds that governs the land to you, i.e., we need to see a, copy, a certified copy of the warranty deed. All right. So, the granted or the grant the land to you. So right here it says, we only need to see the land pattern and certified proof of the most recent deed that grants the land to you, i.e., we need to see a certified copy of your warranty deed for your right to the land or acquired by a quick claim deed, we need to see a certified copy of it and of every other transfer document back to a warranty deed. Second, find a land description on your right of land, your deed, and get it um, get into the land pattern format. In the original 13 states, the land description are usually made by describing landmarks with meets and bounds, which is where a description starts. At a known point, then describe how far to go in each direction until the body of land is described. That method is difficult to deal with over time because landmarks can change, move, and or disappear. Therefore, in those 13 states and in Texas, we need to see certified instruments that shows your land is physically located within the boundary of the land patterns, land descriptions. Since the Constitutional Republic has been formed virtually the rest here to watch each. Since the Constitutional Republic has been formed virtually, the rest of the country was mapped in section townships range formats hereafter, STRF. In the legal description of your land or your right to the land documents, hereafter warranty deed is not in STRF, then you need to get into the format to find the proper land pattern for your land. To do that, you need to trace the legal description on your warranty deed back to STRF. For example, if your deed say lot three of the Byrington subdivision as recorded in the Dexter um, County um, land records, 
Then you go to the Dexter County Clerk and Recorder's Office and find the original copy of the subdivision plat map. Find your lot and locate the section, township, and range that includes your lot. Get a certified copy of the county plat map of the subdivision of your land is located in. You always get two certified copies of everything. Then we um, keep the documents in two separate places for security's sake. You'll especially um, need the part that legally describes the land. That part is called the legal. And it is always list um lists the land description in STOF. Right. Wow. Yeah, right. Right. No. That part is called the legal. So let's come on down. So while you're there, it wouldn't hurt to get a couple of copies, like we said. Um, that can be done with the certified or, um, official plat map, or you can contact a certified surveyor familiar with creating official plat maps. If you have difficulty with that, you may contact us directly, all right? Third, with the description of the land in STRF, you're ready to go acquire a copy of the appropriate land pattern for your land. This is done by taking the legal description of your land in STRF to the Bureau of Land Management, BLM. I know, Black Lives Matter. No, not that BLM. Bureau of Land Management. And ask them in their land pattern office All right, so this is done by taking this, once again, the legal description of your land to the Bureau of Land Management and asking them in their land pattern record office for a certified copy of the land pattern for the land presented by your land description, including section, township, and or range. It is also a good, is a good idea to get at least two certified copies of the appropriate pattern and a copy of the pattern pack map for a particular township your land is in. Fourth, now that you have certified copies of the land pattern, certified copies or the original of the warranty deed, I warranty deed, you'll be ready to send your documents uh, for their completion. You will compile your um, documents into a land pattern sandwich. The land pattern sandwich is a single document compiled of uh, several documents listed from bottom as following. Copyright, quick, quiet claim deed, certified copy of your warranty deed, certified or uh, copyrighted declaration of acceptance of land pattern. Certified copy of your land pattern. All right, fifth. Give the sample land pattern sandwich form between the team and your design to be used for your educational purposes to inspire you to generate any final documents you may need. The package that returns to you all of your documents contain a letter that shares with you how um, you would sue such forms. All right. 
So the package that returns to you all of your documents came the cover letter that shares with you how you would um, sue such form. When you are ready to record, you will need a notary public to date and sign your documents as needed. All right. So when you are ready to record, you will need a notary public to date and sign your documents as needed. All right. The land pattern sandwich service comes with no legal or All right. Come on down. So I'm here. Okay, so land patent sandwich service comes with no legal or educational support. As noted above, we provide a service in order for landowners so we can help the people reset our original jurisdiction government. Six, you will need no publicly filed any record of your land pattern. It is what it is and cannot be changed, updated, or negated. However, most people prefer to protect their land interests for public filing or at least properly execute the instrument like the example copyright quick claim deed provided in the land pattern service documentation. So as a public record of your ownership interest can resolve allegations from anyone alleging that they have ownership interests and can resolve statutory race to the court issues. If you wish to make a public recording, there are several methods that you can use. They are as the follow. File it in the clerk or recorder's office with the land record of the county may public make public notice that you are accepted the assignment of the pattern in the legal notice. All right. Make public notice that you accepted the assignment of the pattern in the legal notice in a local newspaper. You will run that for at least two to three weeks in the newspaper as an ad. Post the land pattern sandwich on the county public notice bulletin board, usually found at either the county district courthouse or at the sheriff's office. Hell, put it in both, right? The post office bulletin board may also provide significant notice. So you can put it at the post office, you can put it at the county courthouse, you can put it at the sheriff's office. Question, Dr. Alain? Yes. All right, so I want you to ask. And I tell you what, you. Does this apply with, for, um, does, does this apply to uh, foreclosed homes as well? Um, only if it was a foreclosed home in which that was um, for me uh, bought by your family or built by your family. Mm 
Now, understand how the sandwich works. On the bottom of the sandwich, you have the highest authority of legal title, the certified copy of your land patent, the title itself. In other words, prove the land belongs free, simple, with the party name on the patent and their heirs and signed forever. Like a built on it. Stuff in. And then it'd be like maybe 50 old. Okay. 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 Okay, so his own word prove the land belongs free simple to the party named on the patent and to their heirs in the sign forever, respectively. If you have um, land patents secure rights to the land through the chain of title, you are the landowner. The patent proves your right of assignment or inheritance. So the next, so the next document is copyright declaration of acceptance of the land patent. Your right to claim the land is your assignment on the land. Yeah. All right. All right, so like you said, the pattern proved that you're right of assignment or inheritance. So the next document is your copyright declaration of acceptance of the land pattern. Your right to claim the land is your assignment of the land, which assignment is found within your warranty deed, where the deed say grants and all signs. Therefore, a certified copy of your warranty deed is the third document on the pile. The top Document is your copyright quick claim deed, which moves your land out of equity. Fairness to the contract will likely be held by the Social Security um, card holder and into the fee. Right. So the top document is your copyright quick claim deed, which moves your land out of the equity, like we said. And that is the most important aspect of this. So and into law now owned by the physical man or woman in question. Keep two copies is best keeping each in separate secure locations. All right, with a land patent as the operating authority on the land, the land cannot thereafter lawfully be taken from for debt or taxes, except by the willing grant of the landowner. This fact does not limit the landowner from the ability to willfully enter contracts that may subsequently mandate the payment of either taxes or debts secured by the property appointing it to the land. Such contracts may contain the landowner's full authority to convey lawful access to the land as well. All right. So right here, you see, again, it's important to realize having the land pattern does not limit you from willingly going into debt, 
or for forming contracts. So you got to be very careful of the contracts that you form after you have secured the land. Not to go back into jurisdiction and not to go back onto the roll, as they call it, which is at the county clerk's office or register of deeds. All right. The fact is, property taxes are the results of a private contract between you and the state of wherever you domicile, reside, as they say. Nothing impeded your right to center or by bounds but such contracts. Respectively, if you desire to so contract the property and punitives to your land, you obligate yourself to the following terms and conditions of your contract in spite of any respective land pattern. Other than the open access and our private copyright internet co uh, website, it says the land pattern sandwich services is the only service provided to people who acquire access to without being or becoming a beneficiary. Again, the sole reason we provide this service, both team, law beneficiary, and no cost into others preceding uh, fee, $200, because we are supporting the people as they work to reset the original jurisdiction, constitutional republic, Republican, or republic government. To accomplish these tasks, people need to and so um, right here it says to accomplish this task, the people need to receipt the elector or the electoral college with electors. So the reason why you don't have a real vote, and they say that. There's two ways to vote, to be an elector or collegiate, and to be a voter, which was nothing more than a popular vote. You have two. You have the collegiate and you have the popular vote. Once you come back into the head of your estate, you become the elector or the electoral college, part of the electoral college. And you vote from that position and become land owners, ship rights, qualified people as electors. We now know that who the electors are. So we provide the land patent sandwich service to discover the electors and to respectively help them save the nation. So this is the science on how to become an elector, a true elector of the of the college, and not just a mere voter, because that's all you're going to hear these Negroes say. Oh, you need to vote. You need to vote. You need to vote. Next week, you need to vote. On the 8th, it's time to vote. And they don't know nothing about becoming part of the electoral. They know their votes don't. They don't know their votes don't count. <clears throat> well, well, yeah, the proper persons and you know, <laughs> right? The popular vote, yeah, the popular vote. You know, ain't no real power in that. Everybody know that the real power is on the electoral college side. Exactly. But but notice nobody ever tell you or speak about how to become actively on the electoral college side. They don't. Well, we just did and showed you how to do it, told you how to do it and everything. So this is what we have to do. Okay. Mm 
Once again, look up the land pattern within your said state under the general statutes. <clears throat> under the general statutes. All right, so getting probate or letters of administration of an estate. Personal representatives, when a person dies, her or his property of a state or a state, as it is called, is dealt with by one or more personal representatives as directed by the will, left by the deceased or the intestacy rule. A will is a document in which the person making it, called the testator, states that she, he, wants to happen to his, to her, his estate after she, he dies. For information about making a will, you can um, contact me or, you know, because when we do trust, you know, that actually can be utilized as the will is on will too. If a person dies without leaving a will, that is she or he dies interstate or interstate. The law contained in the attestacy rule governs what must be done with the estate. For more information on the intestacy, you see section number two. Personal representation or representatives such as executors. Once again, personal representatives are called the executors. If appointed by will, the administrator, if there is no will, administrators are appointed by the high court. So now the court, because you don't leave a will or dictate in your trust, now the court takes over and administrates the process. <clears throat> Grants of representation. Before personal representatives can deal with an estate, they must obtain a grant of, representat of representation from the high court authorizing them to act. Well, this is why you do a trust so that you have control over that. And see, the estate existed before even the trust does. The will would be on the same foothold as the trust. The grant issue to executors, this is why you do an executor letter, an executrice letter. The grant issue to the executors is called a grant of probate, while the administrators are granted letters of administration. If an executor or intended administrator is unable to apply, she, he can appoint someone by power of attorney. Now to obtain probates or letters of administration. Before a grant of representation can be issued, the following things must be done. An oath or affirmation of statement of ass, um, assets and liabilities must be delivered to the Commissioner of the Internal Revenue. The statement is on the list of the um, assets and the liabilities of the estate, i.e. property owned by and debt owned by deceased when she or he dies. The affirmation or oath is a sworn statement confirming that the content of the inventory are correct. Other documents must be delivered include a copy of the death certificate, the will, if any, a copy of the transport title to immovable property, certification of um, validation, of valuation, evaluation of the assets, excuse me, a letter for a bank or shared registry giving the value of the bank account or share of the at the death or the date of death, a power of attorney if equitable. The state duty was abolished in nineteen ninety one, but if the gross value of the estate is more than one hundred thousand dollars, a process fee of Half percent of the gross fee is payable 
For example, if the gross estimate is $200,000, the process fee would be $1,000. All right, so come on down. When the process fee, if any, has been paid, a certification or certif a certificate will be issued by the proper officer assigned by the commissioner of the Internal Revenue Department. Once the commissioner of the Internal Revenue Certificate has been obtained, the application for probate of letter of administration can be made to the high court. The following document must be filed with the application. The commissioner of the IRS certificate, the death certificate, the will, if any, all right, a list of the assets, liabilities accepted by the Commission of the Inland Revenue or Internal Revenue Service and the executor or intended administrator oath or affirmation. This is an affidavit statement sworn in writing by the executor or intended administrator containing information about the deceased and an, own up, and an undertaking to administrate the estate properly. Once again, a power of attorney, if applicable. Duty of executor administrator. Once a grant of probate or letter of administrator, administration has been issued, the personal representative must collect in all assets of the estate, includes money owed to the deceased. Put at least two weekly notices in the official gazette and a newspaper calling on the people owed money by the deceased to send in their claims within three months of the first notice. At the end of three months, payment, period payment pays um, off all debts, including the funeral expenses, distributed or distribute shares out amongst the beneficiaries according to what the will or intestacy rules, which is left of the estate after all debts have been paid. This shall, if possible, be done within a year after the grant of representation. This is what we've seen and what took so long for James Brown uh, for his estate and why he was not even buried yet because they were still going through all the Rick and Monroe concerning that. Given account to their ha handling of the estate to the beneficiaries in the high court. Personal representatives must not must not make a profit out of their dealings with the estate. They can have or take expenses and the entitlement to any gift left to them in the will. If personal representatives fail to carry out their duties properly, they will be personally liable to the beneficiaries. If a person represent if a personal representative is unable to, or unwilling to carry out his or her duties, um, should he can renounce the grant, and a new person will be appointed to carry out those duties. Okay. Now we see the real science here is that um, who would be appointed the executor would be also appointed to be the trustee in this regard. All right. So um, are there any questions concerning anything that we've gone over thus far? No questions from me, brother. Okay. Guys, um, your phone is still messed up. We can barely hear you. Yeah, it sounds okay. like his mic's too high. Yeah, yeah, way too high. All right. Dr. Lee, I got a quick question about the um, yes. mm -hmm. um who can be a trustee or the executor. Um, it, since we have most of us here reclamated and 
can we appoint somebody who is not who has not been recommended as a as a trustee or executor? Oh, yes, but you have given them specific guidelines. Gotcha. Okay. Mm-hmm. Please, Doc, I got a question. Yes. Um, for the executive, executive letter, where do we, um, where do we send the, uh, the document? Say it again. Where do we send the document, the executive letter? In different places, or you can send it to based on your case, based on your situation. Just, okay, just based on, okay. All right. Yeah, um, I go over it right now. Hold on. Okay, thanks. All right, so who receives the executor letter is the question. Can everyone see the screen? Yep. Okay. All right, so here, address the executor letter, including all the banded paperwork. Remember, I told you before that the 1099A is an abandonment or acquirement form in which that the bank uses and do on you and your account annually. This is private banking side. This is the private bank. You might have closed it publicly, but it's still open on the private side. It's still making money for that bank. So here it is. It says Office of Governor and Office of Attorney General in your birth state. Office of Governor in Office of Attorney General, the state you live in. Attorney General or attorney who presents the abandonment or abandoned paperwork. Office of State Court Administration or Office of Federal Court Administration. Office of Court Administration in Pacific Court where case is filed. Office of Secretary of State, state in which you live, or domicile. Office of Chief Counsel for Government Agency. Office of Chief Counsel for Corporation. Office of Chief Counsel for Department of Revenue, your state. Office of CFO for Corporation, creditor. Office of Chief Counsel for Internal Revenue Service. These are the places in which that you would send the executor letter to. Like I said, based on your particular issue. And I give the example of the issues. State taxing agency collection letter garnishment, liens, levies, etc. And because of that, if you have a garnishment, lien or levy, then who would you send it to? Right here it says send a copy to the Office of Governor and the Office of Attorney General, your birth state, as well as also the state that you live in. Two, bank threatening foreclosure or collection. Who would you send a letter to? Office of the Governor of the state attorney general of the state of the um state that you um that you was birthed in conceived in as well as the state that you live in currently as well as also the office of the secretary of state the state in which that you live in three attorney collecting any debt the state you live in the state you was born in in the office of the CFO of corporation. IRS collection um, letter, garnishment, liens, levy, you send it to 
the governor's office, the office of the attorney general, state you live in, state that you was conceived in, as well as also the office of the secretary of state in which that you live in. Five, local or state taxes, property taxes. You send a copy to the governor's office, attorney general of your birth state and the state that you live in. Collection agency notices. Once again, governor office, attorney general, state you live in, state you was birthed in. State tax liens, tax certifications or cert or certificates filed at the county recorders without notice. Once again, the governor's office for both, Secretary of State, oh, excuse me, Attorney General's office. So office of the governor, office of the attorney general, your birth state and the state that you live in. Domicile. All right, so we come down. Credit cards search warrants, arrest warrants, indictments, etc. Who do you send the executive letter to? Once again, the governor's office, the attorney general's office of your birth state, of the state that you live in, domicile in, the attorney who presented the abandonment paperwork, office of court administration, in Pacific Court, where the case is filed, and the Office of CFO for the corporation, the creditor. IRS issues in court. You send a copy to, once again, Office of Governor, Attorney General, birth state, state you live in currently, domicile in currently, attorney who represents the abandoned paperwork, um, the Office of Court Administration, or the court in which that um, your case is filed in, office of the Secretary of State and where you live in or domicile in, and then the office of Chief Counsel for Internal Revenue Service. I hope that you're copying this information. This will help you. All right, again, Christmas. Getting prisoners out of jail while awaiting trial and out of prison post conviction. Who are you going to send this to? The governor of the office, the attorney general, birth state, state that you live in, the court administration, or the Pacific Court where the case is filed. Foreclosures. Judicial and non judicial. Once again, Governor's Office, Attorney General, Attorneys who represent the paperwork, abandonment paperwork, and Office of the um, County Administration. The Office of the Chief Counsel for Corporation and the Office of CFO for Corporation. It's the same thing for unlawful detainer, conviction, action. Same place. Complaint by government agency, federal, state, county, local. You send it to the same places. Governor's office, Attorney General's office, state that you was conceived in, state that you live in, domicile in. The attorney who, of the event who represents the abandoned or presents the abandonment paperwork. The office of the court administration, or specifically the court in which that you have your case filed in, or filed at, as well as also. Office of Chief Counsel for Government Agency. And then the last one, all right, um, tickets, traffic tickets, or bankruptcy. It says see bankruptcy 
um, section for details. Bankruptcy. Um, but right here, specifically traffic tickets, Office of Governor, Attorney General, as well as also Office of Court Administration, specific courts where the case is filed. All right, so notice the X. It says here, address the executive letter including all abandoned paperwork to the party marked with an X. So here we see an X. Right here it says, attorney collecting any debt. So any attorney who presents the abandoned paperwork, that X goes to them as you see here. State taxing agency collection letter, garnishment, lien, levy, etc. This goes to the Office of Chief Counsel for the Department of Revenue, your state. Bank threatening and foreclosure and collection goes to the Office of CFO for Corporation, creditor. IRS collection letter, garnishment, lien, levy, etc. goes also to the office of the chief counsel for internal revenue service. Local or state taxes, property taxes goes to office of chief counsel for department of revenue in your state. Collection agency notice, office of secretary of state state you live in or domicile in as we say. State tax liens, tax certificates filed at the county recorders without notice goes to the office of chief counsel for Department of Revenue, the state that you domicile in. And as you see, for all of these, Credit cards, search warrants, arrest warrants, indictments, etc. IRS issues in court getting prisoners out of jail while awaiting trial and out of prison post conviction, foreclosure, judicial and non judicial, unlawful detainers, eviction action, complaint by the government agency, federal, state, county, local, traffic tickets, bankruptcy, all right, except for bankruptcy. Um, all of them, as you see, the X, all of that means that all of those have to be sent to the office of the state, county, or state court administration, or office of federal court administration. Okay, so this is where and whom you shall send your letters to. Hopefully this was clear. All right, um, my computer is about to go. Um, I need to go and charge this up. Um, are there any questions before we go? Hey, Dr. Wayne, can you hear me now? I'm here, brother. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I emailed you about a, a situation, so I was just hoping to uh, hear back from you about that. But I'll, any questions I got, I'll go ahead and just email you. All right. Peace, brother. Uh, Dr. Ron Lee, Ms. Ralph Bay. Peace. Uh, you know, I I got on I got on kind of late, so um, when you get a chance, if you could send me the recording so I could get the full just of the class today, I apologize. All right, for me to send out classes, y'all, there's a donation. So if you can, just put something forth, and I can get the information out to everyone who uh, wants and is in, interested in um, getting classes uh, if they did not get them or if they just want to go over them on their own time. Yes, sir. Be clear of understanding. Done deal. All right. All right, if there's no questions, I'm going to say A-I-T-Washington East. A-I-T-Washington East. 
Ahí te voy a